Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. It is our great pleasure to welcome you to today's session, Art is Global, the India Moment. We are honored to host three visionary talents who have made India proud on the global stage. Firstly, congratulate us. In fact, we should start congratulating the talented Anasuya Sain Gupta, who mesmerized audiences worldwide with her captivating performance, earning her the prestigious Best Actress Award at Cannes. Next, we celebrate Mansi Maheshwari, whose thought-provoking film, Bunnyhood, captured the essence of innovation, securing the esteemed Larsen F Award. Welcome, Mansi. And uh, we applaud now Chindanand Nayak, whose creative genius has been bright enough, earning him the coveted Lace Enough first prize. Let's celebrate together India's moment in the global art landscape. Thank you so much. Thank you and welcome to NDTV. Anasuya, you know, it is often said that this is a power of storytelling. The storytelling which ensures that uh, the characters unite and then they take India moment to the world. What was it like winning and walking that carpet, the red carpet, when you were announced as the winner? I mean, uh, really beyond anything I had ever anticipated, to be honest, and uh, a moment of deep, deep pride to be on a global stage uh, alongside like extremely talented uh, people from the fraternity as well. It was a fabulous year for our country at Cannes, I believe, with uh, amazing films and projects uh, which all of us have worked long and hard to mount with uh, so much dedication and perseverance. So it was a moment, you know, it felt like it finally uh, bearing fruit, so to say. And, and coming after how many years? Uh, the Grand Prix came after uh, 30 years or the first ever. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the best actress, uh, I believe, the first time ever. Yes. So amazing, really. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And before I move, Anasuya, I want to understand also from you, you know, this is the India story, the Indian arts on the global stage, and it's very different from mainstream. What is being seen as mainstream? So many would say mainstream is stereotyped. Now it is uh, Anasuya Sen Gupta who's mainstream. You know, so I personally uh, do think that we are moving uh, steadily to a time where a lot of these divisions are blurring yes. and uh, it is a, it's a great time to thrive in the sense that see art is art, uh, yes. cinema is cinema and there I believe is room for all kinds of it. Uh, there is the mainstream, there is the non-mainstream but everything is kind of coming closer together and uh, yeah to take it to a global stage. Uh, to take independent cinema from India to a stage like that was a moment of deep, deep pride because uh, uh, it's, it is difficult to get some of these projects uh, to take off and do well and it's really just dedication. Yes, so Mansi, you know, this is also about India's soft power, what we, saw, uh, what we call cultural diplomacy. Uh, and all of you have uh, scripted that and continue to script it. Tell us about yourself. Bunnyhood. Um, sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> um, because the Bunnyhood is a story about me and my mother, and she's about to arrive soon, and she hasn't yet, so I can speak a bit freely. <laughs> um, well, I think Bunnyhood came from um, just there's so much misinformation, misconception, miscommunication in the world. And it made me um, just question why we lie so much. Um, and then I just had some introspective moment and found this story in my life. Bunnyhood is a story about uh, 
learning to lie and why we tell lies in life. So how many lies have you said in the last 24 hours? And have you learned to lie? I think when you experience this, then you actually try to become more honest in life. Yeah. Um, so it's a whole journey. You learn to lie to get by in the society and then you actually re realize that you don't need to do it. Yeah. Um, so this was the journey. Tell us about the red carpet moment. Um, it, was, it was really incredible. Um, Chida was obviously there with me. Um, and uh, because I went to NIFT before, so I was wearing my friend's dress. Um, and it was, it, it was super special. Um, we all became friends really quickly. Uh, we were 18 directors, so it was just walking a red carpet with your friends. It was really sweet. And uh, what was it like, Chida, for you? And uh, particularly when uh, you hear that, you know, it is about India. We keep talking about it because India and Indian history, culture, heritage is very deep rooted. So for us to win awards, maybe it's coming late, but uh, it was long overdue. Yeah, and uh, you know, like a single kind of a film or a cinema can't represent India. India is a country of diversity. Absolutely. So in the mainstream also, the diverse group of films is put on the global platform and uh, very happy that a film like mine, which is in, originally in Kannada, gets resonated in a global language who even doesn't know the language. So that's a huge so let's thing. Let's celebrate, celebrate that, ladies and gentlemen. I think that calls for a big slap. Big clap. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the way I think we, we, where we'll be going forward now onwards. <laughs> so, Jida, you know, women have more options in dressing up on, for the red carpet, you know, sari, lenga, or, or, or lots. What about you? What did you uh, choose to wear? Oh, well, we had uh, rules, so there are certain rules which you can carry and boys have like a blue, navy blue or a black tux. <laughs> so I was quite excited to watch a film <laughs> and quite nervous <laughs> walking. So working across cultural boundaries, I'm sure these are thoughts that come to your mind often, that how you have transcended that, ensured that these cultural boundaries do not you know, exist anymore. Particularly, as you said, that, you know, regional cinema is being celebrated, not just in independent cinema, but also in mainstream cinema. Uh, and, and we have seen that uh, regional cinema today represents the Indian cinema more than Bollywood does. Uh, like, time and again, like, within the few years, we are seeing that linguistic is no more a barrier. Yes. Like you can see a Telugu film or a Kannada film reaching across the India, even to the world. So I don't think right now we are in that, it is no more a barrier for us. So right now we'll be focus on, focusing on to tell more stories at a, even a more, uh, in a bigger platform. I think it's a high time that we focus on making those films. So, so when you say bigger platform, what will it be? I mean, how will it be bigger than Khan's or say Last in F? No, I mean, I think uh, the more diverse approach that Chidan is also saying that, uh, I mean, platforms are, there are big platforms are many and uh, uh, there's even seeing uh, films, the kind of films that are being discussed for the academy. You know, there was a Malayali, Malayalam language film in the talking and so it's, it's a matter of great pride to see because Indian cinema does transcend just Bollywood, you know, it's so much more than that. So I think it's, it's about time and it's happening to see films from all over the country being pushed to these bigger and bigger platforms. And there's a lot of cross-cultural collaborations at work as well. So are you looking at any of those, Mansi? And anything that really stands out for you? Um, at the moment, uh, because I also write my films, so it's pretty much... Uh, me, but all my team, because I've uh, studied internationally, all my team is from different uh, places around the globe. So there's loads of perspectives that come in. Um, with, this, is, this is the reason why my film was in English. Firstly, because we also speak it. I'm speaking it right now. So um, I thought it was okay to do that. And also my friends that I made there, and I, I thought it would reach more people easily. 
um, and the people who were working on it could understand it better. Um, so that even if they're not part of the story or directly uh, bringing their culture in some ways through sound, music, um, um, I don't know, producing, uh, it's, the film is from everywhere. Yes, and that would be the example of the ultimate cross-culture collaboration because if you have a team which is almost global in nature, so how many countries are there being represented in your team alone? <laughs> um, I'm not even sure, but definitely th there's people from South America, loads of people from Europe, from Africa, uh, India, obviously. Um, so we've touched many continents. Oh, how awesome is that? Uh, so, Chidana, you know, we have often talked about how there's need to preserve Indian cultural heritage because you're representatives of India, you're ambassadors cultural ambassadors, art ambassadors on the global stage. So, is there always the sense, something that's lurking behind your mind that you should always have that cultural identity while you're talking about globe, globe, to a global audience perhaps? I think it depends on each individuals. For me, I can say for myself, where um, my own identity, who I am, so how I grew up, and it is already culturally very much interlinked due to the socialism which is there right now. So, uh, I don't know but I always look back, to, I can tell the stories where I come from. And I always tell the stories where I come from. So, I think it is already interlinked with the cultural context which is already, which is set within the story world. So, it's quite already there. So, it's very representative of you. Yeah, because I can tell the story where I come from. Yeah. So. My story world is which I have already seen or which I have already heard and I have put it into a fictional world, though it's a fiction. These stories comes, these characters comes from the things and my interpretation of that reality. Yes, you know, and there's a lot of interest right now uh, and I'm sure the audience, the younger audience is also interested in knowing what's your education background, how can they be like you? I don't even know if I'm the right example because <laughs> my journey has been, I mean, I... I didn't strategize or plan any of this, but just to like put it in a nutshell, I grew up in Calcutta, I graduated in English Literature Honours from Jadavpur University. Then I decided that I want to quickly go to Mumbai and start working in films. I wanted to act, but I also had other interests and skill sets. And before I knew it, I actually started, uh, I realized I now have a, a full career as a production designer or a set designer in films and that went on for several years and uh, that's after many many years is when Constantine Bojanov, the director of The Shameless approached me to cast me in the film and I was completely taken aback how it happened, how a dream which I thought I had left behind about 15 odd years ago was now bearing fruit so it was quite magical for me so what I would say to uh, younger uh, women and men that want to follow the dreams, it's really just that keep creating, keep persevering uh, and not just, you know, in the specific art form. I found that through my own self because I've been an artist, I've been a set designer, now I think is my phase of being an actor to open out. So I do think it's really all about expression and the mediums could or could not change but it's we have to kind of keep our uh, eyes on the goal wanting to express what we believe in, our uh, thoughts, our ideas and there's constant opportunity to keep collaborating with wonderful people and that for me personally has been a really big win because with each experience I have learned something and eventually I think all of those have contributed to the work that I could put in as the actress in The Shameless. Yes. So, you know, because we have very, very talented, I mean, I would say supremely talented actors on the stage. So now I want to understand your journeys and what next, you know, what kind of projects do you have? Uh, because uh, right now we are looking at also a lot of digital collaborations. You know, Mansi, that uh, art is becoming digital. Uh, everything has gone digital. 
AI. Is, is AI a matter of concern for you? And how much of AI do you use in your work? Um, I use AI for emails <laughs> because I don't want to write them. Um, but my whole film was uh, hand-drawn. I drew 8,000 8, frames uh, and they were all hand-painted. So it, and it was all scanned. I didn't, didn't even use a camera to make my film. So um, it might be going digital, but there's still ways to do what you want to do. And um, for, for the young people, I don't think you can replicate anyone's journey. You just need to keep listening to what you can do next or what you want to do next and whatever is easy. When I was in school, I found English and art very easy. Um, and this is all I'm using now. I draw and I use words. So did you actually, while you were in school, uh, think that you'll become an actor one day? Did you aspire for it? Uh, no. Um, I, di I didn't think about it. Think about it at all. I think in passing, I thought maybe directing would be a good idea. But um, I don't know, in, a, in our country, it's a very <laughs> hard choice to make when you uh, come from, you know, not, not that background. What background? Let's talk. <laughs> my dad is a businessman. My, uh, they, all, they have a family business. My brother works with him and my mother as well. So you don't have a film background? Yeah. So, but you became filmy. Um, I, be I think... I only started doing film because uh, of lockdown. Uh, there was not much to do, uh, and I decided to do something, and that came very naturally to me. I started putting stories on, in like, not stories, like I started creating animation and putting, putting up on Instagram, and it wasn't for the likes. I don't think I got many. Um, <laughs> but it was just really fun and... No, it's, it's really incredible, you know, how lives have changed post lockdown. It is almost like we start describing ourselves about pre-lockdown era and post lockdown because uh, we have survived a pandemic, uh, you know, a health emergency, unprecedented. And then we talk about like, you know, your life changed during the lockdown. What changed for you, Chida? Uh, well, I don't, there was a sudden change, but for me it was a gradual organic change. I never thought I would be a filmmaker at first place. So, I was a cinephile and I am an MBBS graduate. So, this oh. is something very like, <laughs> like a very a 180 degree flip for, for me. Uh, so, while you were studying MBBS, you thought that you can act as well? No, I had no thought. I was a cinephile. I basically loved watching films. I realized I like watching films because while growing up, uh, I was, uh, we were not allowed to watch films in house. So, we are only for us to study, study, study. And I was on that rat race of like getting yes. those ranks in CET or whatever it is. So, uh, while studying, I discovered, yeah, with the, like as you said, the, um, there was a digital boom and with the access of internet, I was getting exposure of a lot of films. So that's how it was a slow and a gradual process for me. That's, that's fantastic, you know. Um, and as we are, you know, there is a way in which the Indian talent is now being seen and perceived worldwide. Do you think the lens has changed? I would say a little bit. And uh, I think you said it earlier when we started the chat that it's, uh, it's a long time coming. So... Uh, I mean, I couldn't be happier and I think it feels like the rest of the world is kind of sitting up a little bit and uh, looking at what's always been there. Yeah. It's not that we've not had brilliant filmmakers and actors and actresses and all kinds of artists, but the reach in the last uh, 20 odd years has just been increasing the way with social media, with just the access. And uh, I do think... Uh, people are taking stock of talent coming out of India a lot more now. And uh, I think it's just us getting our dues and I hope it happens even more now. And is it more to do with women? Their perseverance matters? You I know? think so. Yes. I think so. And I think in the last uh, 10 odd years, there's been a lot more uh, women-led voices in the arts. 
and uh, there's a difference uh, it's for us to see there are uh, wonderful films like uh, lapata ladies yes absolutely yes which is you know our official entry what a proud moment and pile kapadi has win at the grand prix uh, which is an entirely uh, you know story of female friendships and so i think it's uh, a time for more women voices the world over anyway and more so for our country because we've been working on it for a long time and i do believe that we are really here a mansi or i we we're standing on the shoulders of giants really there yes. have been tireless work by fantastic and brilliant women for so many many years who have done it perhaps even without due recognition yes and um, so now it's on us to kind of take it forward yes so they have cleared quite a bit of the path for you to walk and then you have to clear even more for others who will follow you and for the others to run you know? <laughs> yeah for you, for you to run as yeah. well now mansi yes <laughs> women storytellers women on the world stage indian talent indian women particularly um, i think yeah i think anisha covered it uh, pretty much um but the, the funny thing about my story is uh in banihood everyone thought it, no no one recognized it was a girl everyone said uh congratulations because i was able to show a non binary kid really well uh and then i told everyone no it's a personal story so i think um my storytelling is more for the people in general uh whoever whoever can relate to it it's for everyone yes yes so you know we have a complete dominance of women on the stage today so the you know that's the case i would say <laughs> now in every sphere when women talk they talk and when they stand they stand very tall i think it's high time we start <laughs> celebrating it and it should be celebrated more often <laughs> I, i i think i left you with no choice but to say so so let's open the floor for some questions and if you have some questions for the incredible uh women here and also chidanand so please uh let's let's have them coming yes so gorav if we can move the mic there yes please ma'am i don't need a mic my voice is very loud Still, uh, that's I, awesome uh, <laughs> i don't need a mic it's for recording okay uh, i'm associate professor of history at shahid bhagat singh college my name is charu mittal i wanted to find out because uh, anasuya and mansi both of you uh, there is a concept of bharat varsh bharat it is not india what you understand is colonial india at the moment uh, i want i don't want to disturb the audience by giving a very historical talk or something but it is very fluid you have lots of regions coming you have banas you have uh, migrations you have diaspora and then uh, along the way there is history of diseases it's not just the pandemic you will have it always even in the future you will have diseases you had uh, uh, dr kotnis ki amar kahani plague this and that bubonic this and that the colonial period uh, in 1914 the spanish flu or uh, the history of death the history of medicine so it's not something yaar ye pandemic ho gaya ye ho gaya wo ho gaya excitement and uh, the other thing is this genderization you know women men ye wo it's not like that you have the matrikas in the harappan civilization you have female power you have male power you have the other side the other mixing and so yes, on so forth so that's all i want to say i think you have a very you should have a i feel i have nobody to guide you or make it you know sound like that uh, a very broader uh, view point than just sticking on you know uh, the set uh, pattern of cliched ways of thinking absolutely your thought yes, on i that? hear you <laughs> she heard you yes got up if the mic can be moved hello everyone i'm shudang from a social media company right so my question to all of you we all make uh, uh, movies on uh, 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 stories which uh, are like success stories right so is there uh, uh, somebody looking for making pictures on the struggle of people 
being faced uh, uh, these days and the story has not yet ended so that with your uh, 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 inputs it can come to a conclusion which is positive right so that's what i want to understand can you repeat the question please so so basically uh, we all see movies which are based on success stories right i wouldn't agree entirely though i mean there are there are kinds and kinds of stories but uh, yes that's probably a larger chunk of what we see but there's all kinds of stories that people are writing and have written yeah. and they want to tell those stories yeah. and it's uh, you are right in the count that it's probably a bigger challenge to tell some of those stories but uh, we are all as a fraternity working tirelessly actually to have those stories come to the forefront and it's really not always about the success stories there's uh, would you agree chada you definitely a, definitely yeah there there are lots of different kinds of stories so do you want to add to this no it's uh, pretty much sorted because the kind of people think what the films are they are not just success stories there are every kind of stories which are already there so it's just matter of time which is coming on the forefront so i think it's more realistic i mean even my film if i mention yes uh, and the character the protagonist that i play there is nothing successful about her <laughs> she is a victim of a terrible circumstance after circumstance and it's a story of her trying very desperately to overcome them and then of course you must see the film to know if she succeeds or not but it's not about a success story let's give it to the women please yes <laughs> go ahead yeah hello hello everyone <laughs> Uh, first of all mansi you are looking very beautiful and i am my name is mansi and you are wearing this sari and uh, you are looking really pretty i am a social media influencer basically i am a beauty and fashion influencer i have a uh, one question uh, as a influencer we are always in like theek hai jo hum bana rahe hain jo cheez hum create kar rahe hain sometime we stuck in this kind of a situation ki hame samajh mein nahi aa raha aage kya kare jo hum kar rahe hain वो चीज सही जा रही है नहीं जा रही है क्या आप लोग के साथ भी सेम सिचुएशन समटाइम्स आती है अपनी स्टोरीज को लेके फर्स्ट एसेंशियली योर 8000 फ्रेम्स दैट यू मेड या हाउ इट वाज शेपिंग अप फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कांग्रेचुलेशंस ऑन बीइंग अ सोशल मीडिया इन्फ्लुएंसर आई हैव थॉट अबाउट इट मेनी टाइम्स एंड इट्स सच अ हार्ड जॉब सो वेरी वेल डन एंड डेफिनेटली वी आल्सो फेस द सेम प्रॉब्लम्स I think any any person who works faces the same problems where they rethink their decisions and are confused what uh, next step to take. So it's very natural and creative blocks happen all the time in creative fields. Um but I think the only thing that, that I do is I take a step back and I do nothing about it and it changes. So what do you especially do in that time because uh, uh, I think a creative block and these things happens with everyone. so what we can do that time yes i think either look for inspiration or uh just some mundane task i think when when you're bored and tired of the life apart from your work then you will want to run back to it okay so we have two more questions to go please go ahead good morning everyone good morning ma'am i couldn't help but notice that you're such a confident orator and it really inspires me i think we're one of the youngest bunch here among yes. such eminent personalities i noticed and uh, i am a student of the university of delhi i just wanted to ask you did this confidence in public speaking come naturally to you <laughs> or have you done something to you know develop it because i want the same skills as you thank you so you much you are speaking with so much of confidence i know you are so <laughs> am i so good as to you thank you so much i'm i'm shaking in my boots my no heart is but you have put up a good even if it is that the case so you have conquered most of it <laughs> thank you so much ma'am that's very kind and yes. and that's really it you know like the shaking in the boots happens to more people yes. than you would realize <laughs> and uh, it's just keep believing in yourself and sometimes as they say you have to fake it till you make it <laughs> and there's no shame in that okay so we have the last question to so osama much. osama Thank please you. go ahead i'm sure you don't need the mic osama <laughs> hi this is a question for uh, any of you i just uh, want to say there is a lot of conversation that is happening around cultural uh, exchange and collaboration etc uh, how can we facilitate uh, you know uh, 
more cross cultural uh, especially with the artists uh, exchange and uh, from what i understand there is a lot of talent in india that is untapped it's like a gold mine that is uh, you know waiting to be discovered how do you how how can we facilitate that i think chida should respond to that um, we have a well, gold mine right here so i think it has been so tapped, but the know. only gold mine needs to <laughs> let audience know them <laughs> so they have to reach lot and lot of people and pe once they discover they know they have discovered the gold mine <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen let's have a huge round of applause for them so thank you so much and thank you thank you thank you very much for having all us all of you and uh, wishing you lots of success thank you for coming to ndtv world summit